All right, I think um, so. Screen Age this year, and we guys were thinking what should be our topic because everyone's covering various disciplines and practices. And we said the technology interventions on mobile marketing are kind of all time high. So it requires us to stitch a panel and talk about all the technology stack that goes into creating a media plan these days, right? So mobile marketing clearly is a one billion story in India. I mean, absolutely anyone who's got mobile phone can be reached through various technology interventions. I still remember one of my early campaigns, and I think all of us come in from SMS era. So Lays Khao World Cup Jao was one of the early campaigns where everything used to get stitched on short codes, right? People used to actually take a lot of efforts, buy the pack, call on a number, or maybe just SMS and keep participating on contest. From there, we evolved and we started running campaigns on uh, Apple's platform, SMS 2.0, which was more richer in that sense, and that's where Google RCS was being much talked about in that era. From there, I think uh, I did my first campaign on IPL 2009, where we ran a campaign for SBI, which was a video ad on uh, IPL inventory, right? And it used to buffer, so my client used to actually wait for the ads to load. And from there, now we are talking about the entire boom of app economy with the 4G era, which is what Vishal is going to talk about. He's kicked about that topic. You can already see that smile on his face. And now we are moving into a 5G era where things are going to be transformational, right? From someone who's created uh, using site builders, I created my own site, neerajruparel.com, ages back, to me creating my own MetaHuman on Unreal now. And now MetaHuman's running Keynote. So you can already see a lot of technology stack which goes into creating these transformations, right? So in today's topic, we've got uh, partners, platform players, uh, marketers who have done some phenomenal work in mobile marketing space using technology. So let me just give you a quick landscape of uh, mobile marketing or mobile landscape of India. That will set the context for us. Would that make sense? I mean, just a quick recap. Yeah, I saw five thumbs ups. That was equivalent to five. Okay. So super. So we're talking about one billion active sims in the Indian market. And we are seeing still record number of SIMs are on dumb phones, which is close to 300 million SIMs are still on dumb phones or feature phones, as we call it, right? Is technology playing a role and to address audiences out there? The answer is a big yes. So we create smart solutions for dumb phones where the user would stick to the regular dialing pattern of giving in a missed call. But, but now, guess what? When the call comes back, the user can start talking to the phones. And that's, that's, in fact, uh, the big techs like Google did a tweak in India where Google Assistant on Vodafone was available for feature phones as well, right? And there are a lot of innovations which happened in that space. And there's a record number of uh, smartphones which are making inroads in the tier two markets in rural India. There are an array of applications which are picking up in these markets. The usage of augmented reality is all time high. So it's been, the industry is being around for more than a decade or maybe two decades now, but the industry has only gotten shape in the last five years. And I would say augmented reality is really, really ripe. I mean, all our panelists here and all of them, almost all of them would have a case on augmented reality, right? So it's so ripe. So we'll talk more about augmented reality. We'll talk more about AI in this session and synthetic AI and generative AI, which is what's going to drive the transformation in times to come. The entire future of content marketing is going to get driven by that, right? Now to begin with, uh, we will spend some time and take up some use cases uh, on the rural marketing side, how technology levers are being used in the feature phone segment, and how are we engaging with an audience who are totally living on voice. They don't interact with any banner ads, they don't go to play stores and download fancy apps. They are the ones who are completely passive. People reach out to them or marketers reach out to them, they create advocates, they engage with them. And how they do that, we will look at our fascinating example on Mondelez. We'll start with Vidya first. And uh, Mondelez, I mean, doesn't need any introduction, right? Mondelez this year has been like the brand of the year on this planet, the kind of work which Mondelez has been doing. And India is pretty much leading the charge with all the canned glory which we got on not just a Cadbury ad. But uh, would love you to take a use case on uh, what have you done for the rural segment on feature phones. Yeah. Uh, thanks, thanks, Neeraj. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, I think uh, it's interesting that you bought the feature phone uh, up front because I think when we talk about mobile technology, etc., there is a tendency to get 
uh, very enamored by the tech that's available. Uh, but at the end of the day, as marketers, what's important for us is how does the technology serve a brand or a business objective, which is rooted in insight. Um, so the case I'm going to talk about really is uh, the work that we did on brand Bonvita around uh, COVID times, where uh, you know we you know we knew that there is a conversation around immunity. Uh, parents were concerned about immunity levels of the children, and uh, you know how could we uh, how could brand Bonvita play a role there, both by providing information as well as partnering. Uh, and in one of our markets, which is Bihar, uh, you know where uh, there is the penetration of media itself is not very high. And the fact that feature phones were, uh, like you rightly said, the number of uh, people on mobile phones is far higher. Uh, what we essentially did was uh, we used the feature phone to sort of reach out to folks who had consented to receiving uh, communication, uh, uh, you know, the TRI database. Um, and we sort of sent a, a piece of comms to them saying, which is, which is just a message saying, uh, you know, would you like to know more about immunity? And if yes, we can reach out to you. And a lot of people who consented, we had a celebrity call them back. So while the uh, the celebrity message was a pre-recorded message, the very fact that, you know, Ravina Tandon was speaking to you on immunity uh, meant that we wanted to initiate a two-way conversation. But it didn't stop there. What we essentially said was, look, um, if you want to know more, you could get on to a conference uh, where we could talk about immunity and uh, you know this this particular thing that's capturing everyone's minds, especially in this COVID time. Um, and effectively, all those folks who had consented got on to a sort of bridge call. So it was like a virtual conference that we enabled for uh, you know think of it like a Teams call without the video on a future feature phone where thousands of people are just joining in. Uh, I think I think when the idea would have first come in, and I'm now speaking on behalf of the brand team, I'm sure it would have sounded very, uh, you know, incredulous, saying that are people really going to participate in something like this? But on topics and uh, context that matter to them, which is immunity in times of COVID, coming from a trusted brand like Bonvita, uh, this particular vehicle really gave us a chance to interact with folks that we were otherwise not able to reach through television or or the fact that they didn't have a you know, a smartphone, a gimmicky phone, uh, where you could do a whole host of other things which a feature phone doesn't allow. So I, I think the partnership, again, with, with WPP on this one, on identifying the right partner, and just reaching out to those people, uh, truly stands out when, you, when you're when you dazzled by the whole, uh, you know, the technology beat, bit that you see these days in the mobile phone. So, I mean, just to, just to add to what Vidya said, uh, can you guys hear me? Just to add to what uh, Vidya said, this entire platform was inspired by PM Modi's Maybe Chokidar, where he spoke to 25 lakh people. All the sarpanches were connected on a call, right? So, and, and then he reached out, he did a massive outreach where he was running a live Q&A on audio conferencing. So even if you have a drop dead feature phone, you can still connect and run a seamless Q&A. And with Mondelez having so much brand power, all it makes sense is to get folks like Ravina Tandon to interact with their popular celebrities in the rural belt out there. Uh, uh, there's a question on gaming, right? And when you see most of these feature phones are now upgrading to smart feature phones, which is those carbon, lava, geo, Nokia kind of phones, right? Where gaming remains uh, a number one thing out there. So the question is to Webo in terms of how are you seeing gaming evolve for feature phones and all the entry level smartphones? And I can, I can see this very interesting use case which was being done on Geo Games with Pepsi on Mountain Dew Arena, the entire console was being ported out there. So that's pretty interesting because, you know, the, the perception continues to be that, you know, gaming is all high end and, you know, uh, the best of the smartphones and that's the, I think it also, to us as a platform also comes from certain, uh, you know, feedback from marketeers at times that, uh, this is how it's bucketed. But uh, as you rightly said, like when we work with uh, even telcos like Geo who have massive, uh, you know, uh, feature phones or dumb phones as we call, uh, the, the users are there, the fundamental to gaming remains the same, which is it is a immersive and engaging platform. And if presented in the right fashion, the audience is there, they are spending disproportionate time uh, also, we believe that's the right time to 
connect with them because it's not from a pure disturbance, you know, so they have time at leisure. So uh, the audience remains to be there, but to be honest, it's to us, it's a largely untapped audience from a monetization point of view. So that remains to be one audience which uh, is probably most neglected. Now, they might not be on priority for a lot of brands or marketers, but we do believe it is, uh, you know, it's not a small number. It is of relevance to a lot of folks and certain amount of priority should come back. Plus, just an additional point from, I think from tech in terms of a tracking or even other, fee, you know, fundamentals like measurement and all, today technology is equally compatible with both. It is not to say that only, you know, uh, per se, smartphones are trackable in a lot of sense. So that's something which should be explored, but I think it's a, it's a mindset issue more than, uh, more than anything else where those are continue to be a neglected audience. You, you want to add to this, Vishal? Yeah, I'll, I'll just like to add to this, uh, and uh, purely talking from uh, Mountain Dew Arena, uh, the difference a uh, couple of years back when it was only done on ground and uh, uh, it was on mobile but not uh, with Geo and not on a, a mobile platform, the year that uh, it went to the mobile platform, there were at least 600% increase in, uh, in, in the user. Yeah, and, and it was done in the Hindi uh, heartland in the uh, rural areas of uh, UP largely. And, and so there were two legs to it. One was a professional leg, one was an amateur leg. 80% usage was on the amateur leg. Thank you so much. That is what I was expecting you to cover because since you managed the account for the longest time and drove that campaign, ladies, gentlemen, Vishal, for all you guys. One more use case coming up on Pepsi from Vishal next. All right, let's just change gears and um, Move on to smartphones now and talk about the most ripe practice on technology and that is, I would say, augmented reality, which is like really upbeat. And augmented reality is pretty much firing up on all three categories, whether it's uh, web AR, which is being driven by platforms like Niantix. Niantix acquired 8th Wall. We just did a quick pilot in our commerce event. A couple of days back, we launched VPS. Yeah, and with 5G coming in, the browsers and the experience on the browser are going to go more powerful. So whether it's web AR, whether it's in-app AR, or whether it's social AR, AR is pretty much firing up on all segments, right? And it's getting layered on top of media. It's getting layered on top of brands existing real estate and making those conversations with the consumers more engaging out there, right? So this would be for Naveen, who's been doing some fabulous work using big data and AR to drive commerce. So let's hear it from Naveen. Um, so I'm going to this for uh, a localized category that we are in. Uh, largely, it's 85% online. Consumers prefer to still normal mobile phones. And uh, many startups and e-commerce platforms have been acquired. Uh, and they're new as how do we really get people to shop online? So while we, we travel a lot of the journey to get there, uh, what AR did was the fundamental problem in anybody And fundamentally what we wanted to attempt to solve was that when we launched AR long back. Because when we, we've done multiple use cases with AR in brand, where it's more, uh, I would say, playful, gimmicky, interactional. What we tried to do was for a consumer till that time who's not used to buying a 30,000 rupee product online, or I would say highly non-standardized, high value product. For someone like that, AR that we brought in was to tell them or tell her in her room how would it look, right? A particular sofa. If it's yellow in color against my green wall, how does it really plays out? So that's largely the journey that we were trying to build. Uh, I would want to add that today where AR is, uh, roughly one in five every add to cards for us happens through a consumer who's gone through AR, right? So that's the journey in which they add. Uh, and the reverse is that for a lot of the others who don't, because all said and I start off by saying 85% of the people are still buying physically, going to a furniture, shop nearby or a carpenter. In fact, they use AR to place it, they put it up on the cart, they go to the store and then they say, this is what I want to buy, I want to have a look. Exactly, a lot of them end up adding to cart, going to the physical store because if they're still not convinced, they still want to knock on wood, so they go there. Uh, while, I, like I said, I was talking to somebody that I don't know what happens when I knock on wood, but it's just that something rings directly to my heart, right? So they still go to the store and then they add it. So what AR has done is one, help us get consumers faster. 
and what we are also talking about today is if you go to any of our physical studios like the physical store which we call a studio um, we don't sell a single piece of furniture that's in the studio right every sale happens through the mobile device or the tab in the store you don't pick up anything from there when you walk out so we've been trying to figure out that the store is also used as a recruitment to come back to the online journey or the mobile journey and hence um, where we are putting our thrust and might next is uh, using a mobile device itself if not a headgear uh, how do we move people to experience vr maybe right and the other way to put it is as we have quoted before our ambition is to build a furniture less store like walk into a store and there'll be not a single piece of furniture right and that's something hopefully soon we get to right so that's a journey so what do they do they walk into the store there's nothing so they use ar to place it and see how it looks so the idea was a lot of times for a store let's imagine you come to this place right if that sofa was not there but i can still sit here and see the sofa when you talk about metaverse earlier yeah. but the idea was if i place the exact sofa the exact way it appears right i've not built it uh, using any other software right so how if i smaller larger size store no the, yeah the, that's a good question that you asked because what that enables for us is today for example our stores would be 2000 4000 square feet i can have a 200 square feet store tomorrow right yeah so it's going to be transformational in the way we reach out to the i would say the deepest part of the nations right it enables us to scale faster get more people to get to this so i would say technology would be a core uh, i wouldn't say a provider but i'd say at the at the core of getting people to furniture and a better home for us yeah. shetanshu you've done some fascinating work have you moved in from a category which is uh, completely easy to deploy campaigns on cpg to an alcohol brand now where there are a lot of restrictions out there so yes. what's been the kind of work which you've done on the technology line especially on ar let's just so by the way before you, while you were asking the question i was thinking of this idea it's a fabulous idea a peppy a pepper fry mini stores sorry it's it's a fabulous idea by the way but yes uh, i think it's it's been a fab journey uh, idc foods uh, was more consumer out Uh, and right now at Panorika, it's it's again it's Alco Bev. While there are restrictions, but I, I, frankly, where there are restrictions, there are challenges. Where there are challenges, there is excitement, right? Because you can push them up and make things happen. Let me let me give you an example of one of the brands we uh, and kudos to the brand team who actually did the campaign. The context is ICC World Cup. Not that we did well, but it's it's a it's a festive of ICC World Cup. Brand is Royal Stag. which which believes in uh, making it large right and uh, what we realized is how do we drive conversations between the product and the sports fanatics using our products how do we how do we bring about and amp up the so called fanfare and glory so we created these uh, packs which are the ar packs for icc world cup we had uh, two things in it number one people could experience all the world cup moments right right from the winning world cup of 1983 to 2011 they could experience everything there were certain moments which were highlights as well which weren't the team couldn't make it through but there were some fabulous innings which people could kind of scan the pack and kind of experience those moments second the trophy i think it's it's a, it's a it's a moment of glory right to have a picture with the trophy the trophy in the in the uh, by the way was kind of circulated physically across the world being the beverage partner for this event what we realized is that you can take a selfie with the with the trophy right so there were two two prong approach number one to kind of have a pick with the uh, so called trophy and second is watch the so called moments what did we achieve of course there was a, the time spent was more than 1 minutes but frankly we penetrated more than 380 cities in india wow. right and i'm hopeful that as we progress in the later half this campaign is going to win a lot of awards as well because it was done really smartly right using the product as the key hero how many how, how many times can we think of the product as the key hero we normally look at events we normally look at circumstances but making product as the hero and using the festive occasion of icc world cup and marry both using the technology of ai i think it it works really well so that's that's one thing which i thought i'll, I'll bring to the table yeah i think I, i was just going through a report which says about 50% plus cpg brands in west they lean back on connected packaging and they actually getting geared for the idless world as they as they say so you need to actually work towards creating one pd and then channelizing it well to deliver campaigns and ar on the pack and gamification kind of helps you create that right another another technology which is uh, kind of underrated when it comes to mobile marketing is this entire space of uh, audio and voice not much is being done in that space 
Um, but there's some fascinating piece of work which has happened in that space. So Sonam here did a very interesting campaign on uh, uh, for Mahindra. I mean, another very interesting point is you don't need to spend millions of dollars to create a super innovative campaign, right? The most awarded campaigns, they would come with least amount of money which gets spent on it, right? So totally, all the brands, when we, when we look at them, they are, they are up for test and learn when it comes to technology. But folks like Sonam, they are very clear. When they are getting into test and learn, they are very clear in terms of what they want to learn from that experiment which they are doing, right? And that campaign, which is on sound map, if I'm not wrong, that was fabulous. So I thought uh, we should talk about it on this panel. Thanks, Neeraj, for giving me this opportunity. So everyone out here, if you could just close your eyes for a second, go to that one place in your mind, and think about that one sound that is close to your heart. I mean, everybody, I'm asking you to do this. Now literally. wake up, some of them slept, yeah? Yeah, I mean, I don't want you to sleep for a long time, but just go, close your eyes, and think about that one sound that's actually close to your heart. Now take that sound, marry it with millions of others, and create a music video out of it. This is exactly what we did for XUV 5 double. XUV 5 double was a brand which wanted to connect with people on an emotional level. Buying a vehicle is not just, you know, making a money investment. It's more of an emotional investment, not just for you, for your entire family. And how do you connect at an emotional level with people to make them feel that, you know, this is what you need in your life? We were not selling a vehicle. We were not even promoting the brand. All we wanted you to do was to send us a piece of sound that is close to your heart, tag us on the location that you are, and we will create a video out of it. All of this done through this simple piece of you know, plastic or metal that is lying next to me, that is going to be with me. That's all I'm asking. And this is what helped us get so many, 5,000 hours of content, of user-generated content, which was unbelievable. The amount of consumer engagements that we had was just send off this entire campaign off the roofs. I mean, as he rightly said, you know, some of the surprising campaigns come with the least of budgets. And trust me, this is where we realize that we connect with consumers at a very different level when we do emotional campaigns, when we're not pitching or actually selling a vehicle. And this is where mobile technology came into uh, rescue. It got us all of those emotional connects with the consumers. We got them with a music director, made a music album out of it, saw to it that we promoted them, and there was an emotional connect because the minute you see your voice that you have shared on a platform with Mahindra coming in a music video, you know that's a part of me in that music album. And that is the kind of connect that we wanted with our vehicles because your vehicle is a part of you. And this is exactly what the entire campaign was all about. Oh, isn't that fabulous, uh, the way they thought about it? And I think you give an interesting example that you move into National Park and if there are monkeys making some sound, a lot of people actually posted that. A lot of people posted their wives yelling at them. At That's home. an emotional sound for you. <laughs> give it to us. I don't know whether they went into the main footage or not, but yeah, it was, it was quite a lot of fun. Now, just taking this audio conversations ahead, uh, how many of you heard about uh, this campaign which Mondelez did or what uh, Pepsi did, which was a rap challenge with Bacha on Google Assistant? Or Mondelez did a fabulous campaign. They've got this property do nothing mode, which Vidya kind of champions. And there was this voice skill which was being created, which was uh, top trending globally in terms of the one of the unique voice assistant deployments, right? Where we made Google do nothing. So when you ask, Google a serious question and you are into the do nothing mode, Google is going to give you a cocky response back and not the answer to the question which you asked Google. And to extend that, Vidya has gone ahead creating a lot of mobile first experiences on do nothing mode. So why don't you take us uh, through all the experiences which you've created? Thank you. Uh, I, think, uh, I think the most unique thing about do nothing work uh, that we've done in the last couple of years is that uh, uh, one, these are mobile first experiences, but two, they would not have existed if we did not have mobile technology. So it's not possible to do some of this work on, let's say, a desktop or a website version. Uh, so you spoke about the Google Assistant uh, uh, piece. The other work that we did very recently, I think, uh, if I'm not wrong, last year, was that uh, the, the proposition of Fiserv is, is basically, you know, to say that we want to encourage people to do nothing, have that downtime, 
uh, and you know enjoy their five star at that time. Um, and we literally wanted to reward people for not doing anything. And we wanted to see that, uh, you know, can we create a sort of gratification for the amount of time that people are doing nothing. And the only way to do that was to say that, you know, through the pack, again, a connected pack that takes you to a site uh, where, you're not, where you don't do anything on the mobile phone, right? You keep the mobile phone and the, and the site sort of tracks any movement that you've done there. So whether you're opening any other site or any other window, et cetera. And if you're not doing it for long periods of time, you obviously get coins. So there were people who did nothing for half an hour and got like some three, four coins and so on and so forth. Almost like crypto mining. Exactly. So, you know, uh, while the coins were not crypto, but, it, you know, it kind of brings together the Gen Z uh, passion points. It also stays true to the philosophy and it leverages mobile technology because this would not have been possible with anything else that doesn't capture, let's say, movement or, uh, you know, activity. And it's so personal, right? It's, it's, it, if I want to offer a hyper-personalized experience, mobile is the only way I can do it. And it works very well here because going back to your original point of, you know, how penetrated mobile is in India, anybody can do it anywhere. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it just fits every single aspect of the activation that we might want to do. Absolutely. Give me that. I think that's my lucky one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So... Another, another subject which is core to mobile marketing is this entire space of app economy. And Vishal is itching to talk about it. So I would let him do the talking on app economy, how has it boomed in COVID era, in 4G, and how does he see it evolving in 5G? Yeah, well, let me try and raise the bar, uh, because Neeraj has been talking about 1 billion consumers and how such sexy technologies like AR, VR, Metaverse, they're all... Uh, getting the consumer, uh, giving them an immersive uh, experience. But what has happened because of that? In the last uh, two, three years, uh, because of 4G and then uh, COVID, and because of these technologies, consumers have actually started using uh, a lot of apps, and, and a lot of new categories have come up. It's, it's not uh, just e-com anymore. There are lots of categories. It's gaming, it's uh, a lifestyle, it's wellness, it's uh, education, it's learning. And what has happened because of that, uh, so we are talking about 1 billion. Uh, if you look at uh, 2021, there were 30 billion uh, apps which were downloaded in India. Uh, if I look at 2022, uh, till now, uh, the number is around 35 billion. Uh, we are the second largest in terms of app downloads in the, in, in the world, uh, second only to China. Uh, With 70% so, churn rate? Uh, um, okay. <laughs> that, that's <Poison>. more. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's probably uh, someone like uh, uh, app owners probably would uh, give you that uh, answer. But it actually depends on what they're doing on that app. And, and that is where I'll, I would come when I talk about what 5G would uh, bring in. But what, what has clearly happened is that a lot of transaction that is happening on uh, apps now is because of what marketeers have done with the consumers on those apps. And, and that is where someone like us uh, isn't getting into a lot of sexy uh, technology, but we, we simply have uh, integrated our platform with all OEMs. Uh, because uh, around 45% of these downloads are not from uh, Play Store, Google Play Store, but they are from respective OEM uh, app stores. So we, we've just integrated it with the OEMs. Uh, you can download, uh, you can put your app over there. It automatically gets tested by all uh, OEMs. If you pass the test, it's uh, published on the OEM app stores, and you, you simply promote it from there, and you get your consumers. Now, what 5G would do is... is it's probably give up more personalized and more immersive experience to these consumers. And that is where I see the app economy getting another kick. And this, this 30, 35 billion would probably go to a 50, 55 billion in the next couple of years. Okay, super. So, uh, since you mentioned metaverse, let's just switch gears and move on to my favorite topic. I mean, almost like all the panels I've been doing this year is on metaverse and metaverse marketing, creating my own meta humans, talking a lot about pixel streaming, which is going to drive those 500 million and 65% of those 500 million phones, which are in the price band of 10 to 15,000, where data remains a bigger channel. So what 5G is going to do is, it's not to download apps, not to watch videos, but it's got to do some heavy lifting on computing. And that's where you will see telecom upgrading, like exactly what US did in 2014, the entire 
ROI model on pixel streaming out there. I don't know whether India is going to go that route, nor am I saying that all metaverse experiences are going to be backed with pixel streaming because it's a very expensive affair. But definitely for um, the, the stuff which you see on, uh, what do you call a concert, it's a definitely a better platform to try it out, right? So if, just to give you a quick metaverse story for India, we've activated about 12 plus brands uh, in the metaverse space up till now. And I, I see a transformation every three months in terms of the tech stack and how it's evolving, right? From we conducting world's first wedding on the metaverse and getting Coca-Cola to sponsor it, to Holi on the metaverse, to Decentraland work, which we have done with uh, Perfetti, creating a kids award show. And Shetanshu did something really fascinating yesterday, which is a zone which he's created on Decentraland again. So would so love to hear again, about it's, that. It's, it's an age of uh, experimentation. Uh, we're still trying to figure out things. Uh, of course, not do India's first, India's first, as, as Metaverse is labeled to be. I think it has a lot of capabilities, uh, and it's more about the mindset. Uh, what we did was for Blender Sprite uh, fashion, iconic fashion series, which we do, we actually made this entire experience uh, borderless for the lifestyle and fashion space. So what you do is if you go into the space, uh, this, this so-called center land, what you see is everything right from buying NFTs from the top fashion designers to doing a live uh, ramp walk to kind of then getting certain exclusive passes for the physical event, right? So it's end to end. It's, it's one of its own kind of, uh, kind of space you are creating. And uh, yes, happy to share it's, it went live. I would urge everyone to kind of participate as well. It's a sales pitch. Hmm. But, uh, but I think it's as uh, Neeraj, you would understand, we are still in the space, most of the brands, uh, uh, in fact, when I was at ITC as well, I remember this wedding thing, and uh, we did for Favel. I think uh, we urged, we, we, were di we were discussing with the brand team that what should we do, right? And those two, the couples, right, we gave them a Favel ham hamper, chocolate hamper, yeah, right? Yeah. And it's one of the most costliest chocolate in the country today, uh, Favel, from ITC. We they said, got married for that, I feel. Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> no, so, again, uh, look, when things are happening, you're not sure what, what, how things are kind of going to be. It's good to kind of go in the motion, experience, uh, test, and then learn certain things. I'm sure 80% of times you will fail, right? Uh, but what, what is important is that gone are the days, I would say it's, the world is changing so fast. You can't label uh, Metaverse as India's first each time. Aise toh, there are hazard categories and everyone can say India's first, right? Yeah. And but what's, what's important is to have an objective, yeah, right? Yeah. And just to add, the hype cycle for Metaverse is over now. What it needs is a real utility. That is what we are trying to crack with a lot of our brands, which is more sustained and long term. Everyone has kind of ridden on the hype cycle, created a lot of interesting experiences. Having said that, virtual world is here to stay. Experiments are here to happen on virtual world, and brands will continue to do that and learn. Right? So um, now we have about eight minutes, like each one of you. I would want you to talk about the most promising technology which you guys are foreseeing for yourself in the 5G era in 2023. So let's just start with Weibo and Metaverse and gaming. It's such a hot topic with Roblox leading the charge. And uh, the new age brand mascots, as I say, we created something uh, globally called Wendy's. Wendy's is a, a, a virtual baby. She moves into gaming worlds like Decentraland, Minecraft, Roblox, and she challenges every gamers like me. And guess what? She beats us at that. So you will see more and more AI mascots moving into virtual worlds, brand mascots, and engaging with the audiences out there. So what's your take on metaverse and gaming in the new 5G world? And that's something very close to heart, you know, because gaming is what we typically stand for in the market. And, uh, you know, so very rightly said by Neeraj that the sort of experimentation stage is gone, but the whole concept and metaverse is here to stay. And that doesn't mean, you know, in future everybody is going to just wear Oculus and just that's, that's not uh, where it's going to evolve. But what we are seeing is this sort of gradual uh, transition. So even in this larger gaming space, uh, how it transitioned from pure just sort of advertising or banners or videos to then moving purely in-game, you know, as a stuff, then NFT started coming in, tokenization happened. Uh, eventually, you know, uh, stuff moving towards collectibles, also their engagement. So the fundamental to marketing in terms of the audiences, connecting with that audience, having an engagement, 
are still the parameters which would which would remain the the space continues to evolve and every year we'll start seeing more and more uh, you know used cases for more you know not just evolved uh, people or you know avid gamers but masses adapting to it and that is where you know the from an experimentation we'll start seeing much more that's our you know how we engage with brands today where lot more sustainable and continuous activity would start coming in into this world so it's not very far off from the way we look at it maybe you know every quarter there would be certain development which and it also needs a lot of evangelization like for the longest time people thought that metaverse is a property of meta this like in old days my bosses to tell me that yahoo belonged to sashi shami kapoor <laughs> you know a lot of people used to say that in old days that yahoo is owned by shami kapoor that was not the case right so a lot of evangelization is also needed i think vishal said that no <laughs> <laughs> definitely no, but but the pace is going to be much faster this time absolutely so moving on with nfts i would say the novelty value is perished which means the true value is going to get evolved and a lot of utility driven nft services are around the corners now one of which is what sonam has done which is nft for a social cause right we would love to hear that on the work which you did on thar in fact that was the first nft by any automobile brand in that category yes that's correct in fact it was the first indian oem to have nfts in india and this was done by doesn't do anything which is second <laughs> <laughs> well mahindra has been a pioneer for everything almost and uh, it was a privilege you know to have superhero nfts by thar we had a huge auction by that and we were very happy to donate all of the money to charity in nani kali but mahindra has always been a pioneer for philanthropic work and that's the reason we did this initiative so that you know we could bring in the light in the you know in the lives of so many other people as well and we chose thar as the brand to do that clap guys it was such an amazing use case all right you did some experimentation on metaverse as well right yes we are also in the process and though that's you know under covers um but you know as you under can covers. see yes under covers Not and under. that's the reason you know we are moving into a world which is evolving day by day so when metaverse was born and now also that you know we are still talking about the whole evolution about metaverse we are looking the same change that is happening in the automobile industry as well you know today we are looking at hybrids we are looking at evs and we're not just evaluating or considering we are actually buying the vehicles and that's where we have to see that you know today's audience is changing today's audience is not looking at you know probably just the gasoline or diesel we are looking at sustainability in a huge way and that's the reason where there is a marriage between metaverse and evs and you know whichever are the new vehicles that are going to come you know that's the thing so there's a lot of evolution that is going on there's a ev evolution in the entire industry as well and yes as i said you know there are things that are under cover and probably just a little wait and watch till we see what happens next so so we did volvo verse which is an xc40 launch on the metaverse which was hugely successful on a click of a button you can enter the metaverse you don't need fancy headgears to enter the space that's another myth which is associated with the metaverse saying that unless you don't have a quest to you cannot enter right now you cannot enter horizon worlds without a quest to but you can enter virtual worlds almost all of them right uh yes coming on to navin um how does you uh, how how would the entire consumer experience when it comes to shopping change in times to come because when you see commerce today has got so many interventions we are talking about whatsapp commerce to voice commerce to gamification commerce to live commerce and there are so many variants of it now or using synthetic ai like what biko is doing with dia mirza synthetic avatar right or digital humans they are being used to drive commerce now and 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 just to give you a a quick uh, context on all the audience which is resting in your cart right now and you mentioned a lot of them they put the stuff on the cart and then they come to you they want to see the actual stuff and then they buy right this is one of the innovations which we did on an audio platform is when you put stuff on the cart and when you are then listening to music on an xyz platform the same product which you have placed it on the cart those ads are going to play back at you right so that's one of the ways a technology hack to kind of coax people to increase the purchase intent and make them drive so how do you see it evolving for your category Uh, so i'll take it from what you were mentioning let's say the cart piece right and then i'll go to the others i think the 
I think the beginning at the core is getting your consumer right. I think understanding exactly what would the consumer do if, for example, they have added to cart but not purchased and are four days since then, right? So I think what we do today extensively, uh, I would say a reasonably good job at is maybe understanding this consumer right. So I think we spend a lot of our effort and energy and I would say uh, resources as well to get this right. I think at the core of, if you ask me how is my consumer who's added to cart and been five days since then different from 10 days consumer, right? And so we make a lot of plans around that. So fundamentally to start off with, I think our journey is towards understanding the consumer better. If you are available online, uh, luckily you have possibly everything barring for uh, very personal details of the consumer with you, right? So you basically know how do they behave. So a lot of our interventions, journeys that we do is just to get this better. But that said, I think our journey ahead is about removing all the barriers and the walls in the journey. And hence I talk about if there is a physical space that we need to go to, how do we make it simpler for the consumer, right? We build studios, we are in 100 plus cities today with about 200 plus stores across the country, right? Uh, and that number, I would say literally doubled in the last year, right? Because we said that's important if we need to get to a tier two and a tier three store where people still want more support to make their journey. What we're now looking at is if you really want to scale this up further, one of the things I talked about earlier, which is this entire journey of uh, virtual reality assisting in this journey. But the other thing is, can we completely take this off? Can you be at your home and come to my studio, right? So that's the journey we're trying to make towards. So I think what we'll betting on are two things, which is getting the consumer right, exactly giving them what they need. And number two is making it extremely simple for that consumer to purchase with us and whatever aids in that journey, be it augmented reality, virtual reality, metaverse, whatever be that journey to do that, right? So a lot of our not getting into details because again, uh, it's maybe under the same wrap, <laughs> right? But the idea is, the idea is all our efforts currently are towards that, ensuring that the key metrics like conversion, right, getting them to buy more, LTV, a lot of those metrics are what we are focusing on and getting that basics right. That's where our energy is. So we've actually run out of time and some of you are very liked. But we will still uh, ask Vidya to round up the conversation for us because she's been doing some fascinating work using synthetic AI, not just a Cadbury ad. It's not worth forgetting on this panel. We should call it out. And how do you see synthetic AI getting leveraged with your existing CRM or the entire wealth of 1PD which we are building? to drive conversations, especially in the 5G era? So I think uh, I, I'm, uh, you know, it's, uh, I'm not the right person to talk about not just a Cadbury ad, but honestly, it doesn't need uh, uh, any more information about it than that's already there in the public. But it's a great example of how the right context uh, um, and the right brand ambassador can, can just work wonders with, you know, an enabling technology that just transformed the piece of communication. Uh, but coming back to the, to the question that you were asking, right? So, for example, uh, look at the fact that, you know, let's take the example of our gifting uh, site. So we have a personalized uh, gifting experience where people could, can personalize their gifts and, and buy them. This is over and above our regular uh, gifting assortment. Now, a lot of times we realize that, you know, again, same thing, right? People add to cart and then not go ahead. Or they're a little confused about what are they getting the, you know, the personalization element about. Is it just packaging? Or could they also, you know, personalize the product and so on and so forth? Um, and these are people who actually want to buy you over a host of other options. So clearly there is, um, and this is not something that we do on a regular basis. So despite the fact that, you know, we, this is not our core business, there are people who are wanting to do it. We clearly want to understand from them, you know, what's stopping them, enable this journey a little better. Um, and while there is WhatsApp, while there are chatbots, etc., that can anyway drive this conversation and convert, uh, an element of, you know, a human element, whether it is a celebrity or a regular uh, human element, who can, who can initiate that conversation, add elements of personalization, uh, understand from you, you know, you could be somebody living abroad but want to send somebody to your relatives uh, during Diwali and, you know, you want to get that done in uh, interior parts of India. That entire experience can be uh, personalized the way you want and you could bring a human element to it, which makes it that's mu that much more intimate. So for a CPG brand like us, uh, you know, we don't do personalization at that scale. We don't need to. Ours is about mass personalization. Uh, you know, while it's increasingly getting uh, hyper-personalized, we still don't do one-on-one. -on -one. But something like a, you know, a digital human that, you, that we saw last week, 
uh, can enable that conversation. It could be a participation that a consumer is doing in an activation. It could be buying something from us. And we can actually do the transaction. We could also say that, hey, you know, maybe we are not able to provide it to you, but you could go to this shop right next to your home, basis the data that you've given us, and we can, you know, you can pick it up from there. So there is an Absolutely. element I'm there. I'm scared of her now. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to stop. So there is an element that the human, uh, you know, the digital human can bring, yeah. which is, uh, you know, which, which might be very useful to some of the other categories which are high value, but we see a lot of value in this CPG is actually a very interesting well. topic on digital humans. So if you 4M gives me another 10 minutes slot at the end of this conference, <laughs> I'll talk about that. Thank you so much, uh, panelists. This was a highly enriching session which we had. Thank you so much, audience. You could mail us your questions because she's not going to let us take them. Thank you so much. <laughs>